Hi everyone, it's Sarah from Sassy Reads, and today I'm bringing you a full-length review of Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates. This is a really interesting modern classic, although I disagree with the being term modern because it was written in 19... Um, published in 1961, so obviously it's a little bit older, and it follows the 1950s era, so I wouldn't consider it modern by any means, but the reason why I think people are terming it a modern classic is because it didn't really become critically acclaimed until the 1980s when a couple of people started to get into Richard Gates and then eventually in like the early 2000s, I think in 2005, a movie was made with Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet and it was a huge Academy Award winning film. So that kind of helped um, elevate this novel's um, success. And this is a novel that I think doesn't get the love that it deserves. Um, it's wonderfully written. I can't, I, I can read you passages and like even that I feel like I wouldn't be doing it any justice. But um, I'll read you my favorite section which I wrote a whole paper on. I just wrote one, like I wrote a paper on just one chapter alone and it was the main wife's chapter and I'll explain more later but I just want to give you a feel of the writing that way if you are interested in picking this up you can kind of see what the writing style is like then you are breathing gasoline as if it were flowers and abandoning yourself to a delirium of love under the weight of a clumsy grunting red-faced man you didn't even like and then you were face to face in total darkness with the knowledge that you didn't know who you were and like that kind of stuff and that kind of writing and just the prolific thought pondering atmosphere that Yates provides is so magnificent and it's just so captivating and emotionally gripping and I definitely cried a lot while reading this because if you didn't know it's tragedy um so let me tell you what this is about so this follows the um couple of the Wheelers Frank and April as they live in 1950s suburbia so um it opens up with a chapter surrounding April and a couple other um, older people within the town performing in a play of the Petrified Forest. And the play is a complete flop. Everything that they put their hopes and dreams in doesn't come to fruition. And it's kind of um, a foreshadowing to the whole lives of the Wheelers themselves as well as everything that occurs in this novel. So the opening chapter is very important. Um, and it sets the stage, if you will, for the three acts that are to come in the Wheeler's life as we follow their journey on Revolutionary Road, which is where they live. And so, um, it's, I don't want to say too much, but I also don't know how much to say because I don't know what will get people interested in picking this up. But it not only follows April and Frank, but it also follows a couple named the Campbells and um, the, their names are Shep and Millie and we get a couple of point of views from Shep who is an absolutely obsessed with April and he just desires her so much and it's definitely creepy, definitely uncomfortable and very weird. There's also Miss Givings who, if you get it, Miss Givings, fun play on words. Um, she's the realtor who sold them the house on Revolutionary Road and she has the proclivity for popping up at the most horrible times at times when the wheelers are at their most vulnerable, when their true faces are showing, and when they're plastered right in front of that mirror and that window that shows everyone their true selves. And that's Frank's biggest fear is for anyone to see who he truly is, even though he puts on this front. And so Frank's a very contradictory character, but he's also very sentimental. He's very, um, I don't want to conform, but he's like, got a bleeding heart for conformity and April on the other hand wants to get a job in Europe and she wants to travel and work and just be autonomous and she wants to provide and just have more than what this life has given her because she feels like life has just thrown this on her and her chapter is phenomenal like she only gets one chapter in this whole freaking novel but it is fantastic and just this whole story in general is amazing it blew me away. It's subtle, and it's not like it's anything fantastic. And it's probably been told countless times, but this one was written so long ago that I feel like it inspired people without them even realizing it. And I just loved it so much. It's 
it's, there's something about it. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but you know when you read a novel that it just, it has all these philosophical arguments, but they're not really arguments, they're just simple phrases and quotes, and it really makes you think, and you step back and you start to see a larger picture. I feel like this is one of those novels that does that, especially for that era and time in history, and I'm really fascinated by that period. Like, I wrote two or three papers on 1950 Housewives in Suburbia, just because I find the topic interesting um, in this semester alone, so I was really intrigued by that topic, surprisingly. That's not something I usually am fascinated by, but I feel like this book contributed a lot to it, um, and so, like, there's just so many wonderful quotes in here, and I have, like, I absolutely love this. I did watch the film. I do like the film. I do highly recommend the film. Um, I do have problems with it, of course, like, how they changed the narrative between him and Maureen Grobe, um, his weird affair mistress thing. It's just that unsettled me, but, um, I did like how they portrayed the tragedy that occurred, because I feel like it was tastefully done, but it was also kind of dramatic with showing things that didn't need to be shown, but yeah, I just, I love it. And if you're wondering, besides the quote that I read at the beginning, which is my favorite quote, there's also one other quote in here that I absolutely adore, and I will read it to you. And it is that if you wanted to do something absolutely honest, something true, it always turned out to be a thing that had to be done alone. And I feel like that quote alone encompasses the whole moral of this story and what Yates was trying to portray in the 1950s Housewife. And I just think that more people should pick up Revolutionary Road. I don't know if it's even on anyone's radar at this point in time, but if it is on your radar, you should look into it. I think it's a fabulous novel, and if you aren't interested in reading it, but you would like to watch the movie, I do suggest the movie, but this is so much better because Yates' prose is phenomenal, fantastic, one of the best written novels I've read all year. Just so finely immersive, and he chooses words so carefully, and... You can definitely tell this is a fantastic novel, and if all debut novels were like this, man, we would have a lot of fantastic novels in this world. This was amazing, and I just wish that I hadn't waited so long to read it, but I'm glad that I did because we read it as a class, and that experience alone was phenomenal. So, highly recommend it. And let me know down below in the comments if you're thinking about reading Revolutionary Road. I really hope that you are interested in it. Let me know if you've already read it, and I hope to see you down below in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye, and happy reading.